Uh, hi, I'm Tony from Quality Bridge and Fab. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, Mesparol uh, Bridge Trust Restoration Project. Uh, it's a pen dot job. What's going on here? Sorry, man. You need to speak right into the microphone too, Tony. All right, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. So again, I'm Tony from Quality Bridge and Fab. Uh, talk to you today about a project we did with uh, PennDOT on the Messerol Bridge Trust Restoration and Relocation Project. Uh, here's my email. Uh, we're located in West Middlesex, Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Pittsburgh area. Uh, we're an AISC certified bridge fabricator. We specialize in anything from bit bridge beams, scuppers, bridge rail, pretty much any structural steel component in the uh, bridge and highway industry. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the project background today, a little bit of history about the Messerol Bridge, uh, how it was removed and restored, some of the site assembly and installation, uh, some lessons learned that we had, and then we'll take some questions here at the end. So this project was bid uh, back in, uh, April of 2021, and it was bid under PennDOT ECMS 111430. Uh, it's a bike trail extension at Pima Tuning State Park Spillway. Um, and it was also included the relocation and restoration of an 1876 truss bridge um, relocated from Oil Creek Township, PA, over to Lyonsville, PA, which is about 50 miles. Uh, total project cost was just under 2.3 million, and uh, final completion was target for September of 2022. So the project scope included the, uh, the rehabilitation of structural members, as indicated on the plans. There was uh, new stringers and diaphragms for the um, trail support system. They were going to revise the uh, fixed and expansion bridge bearings. Uh, there was some unforeseen repairs included. Uh, all the new structural steel was to be grade 50, and it was going to utilize a uh, three-coat uh, inorganic zinc paint system. But as you can see here, this is roughly the layout. It was about a 100-foot long truss um, spanning over a, uh, a creek, and the original truss had a width of about 17 and a half feet. Since this was going to be a bike trail, they were uh, shrinking the actual use of the truss down to about 11 feet for the trail. A little bit about the history of this truss. It was built in 1876 by the Rod Iron Bridge Company. So that's about 146 years old. It's a bowstring truss, it's 103 foot and 17 foot six span width, as I said. It was originally installed in Oil Creek Township, Pennsylvania. Uh, up until its decommissioning in 1987, it was owned by Crawford County, Pennsylvania. And uh, if you're not familiar with the Rod Iron Bridge Company, they were based out of uh, Canton, Ohio, which is only about an hour and a half from this bridge's location. This shows a, a picture of the bridge installed in the, its uh, state where it was shut down in 1987. So at the beginning of this project, uh, back in back in uh, March, before it was bid, I went out and took some site pictures to kind of do an evaluation of the structure. It's located between uh, a sawmill, uh, an active railway, and some private property. The bridge kind of just got lost there um, as the roads were built around it. So here's here's just some site pictures of the condition that it was in back in 21 when uh, the project was out for bid. You see they had removed all of the, the decking. There was no way to get across the bridge at all. Uh, it was essentially just sitting there. Uh, it's a bowstring truss, so you can see uh, the bowstring runs across the top with uh, support members on the bottom, and then there's floor beams running across, uh, tying everything together. Uh, this is an example of one of the bearings. Uh, it was a rocker bearing on each side. 
and just giving some closer details of, of what the condition was of the structure when it was, uh, when it was said, you can see there's a lot of rust, pack rust. There was a lot of section loss on the actual bow steering section itself. So after the project was awarded, um, a lot happened getting into the contract side of things. The bridge was removed from Oil Creek Township and it was dismantled on site by a blacksmith out of uh, out of Logan, Ohio, called Lockhart Ironworks, along with the contractor Horizon Construction out of oil, out of Sandy Creek, Pennsylvania. The, one of the biggest keys to this, I believe, as it was taken apart on site, is everything had to go back exactly where it was at. So as you can see on this picture, the, the blacksmith and the contractor made a, their own key and tagged every single part with a little uh, brass key that, that really gave us a location of where things needed to be put back as we went through the restoration process. After the structure was completely removed, uh, it was shipped to a sandblaster. Um, it was blasted to get all the existing paint off there and then subsequently shipped to Lockhart Ironworks down in Logan, Ohio. You can see some of the pictures here of the components after it was blasted. Um, the, I feel like one of the biggest keys to the success of this project was an initial inspection meeting that we had at Lockhart. Uh, stakeholders were Penn Dot, McCormick Taylor, who was the design engineer on the project, uh, a couple members of Verizon Construction, who were the prime contractor, us as the steel fabricator, and then Lockhart Ironworks was the, uh, um, Essentially, what we did in this meeting is we took the plan set and reviewed all the locations for where the repairs were going to be. And, and we also kind of inspected every single part to see if there was any additional section losses after sandblasting. Um, and here's just some more pictures of the, uh, the parts after blasting sitting in Lockhart's yard. So these, these bearings form one on each corner of the structure uh, was a giant cast housing uh, with a, a, a pin working through it. That's the lower cord you can see. Um, and then the bottom plate is, is also a giant casting. <clears throat> so what we, what we did during this meeting is, is go through every piece, uh, the historical, society in the area wanted to preserve as much of the original structure as possible. So we really took some time to go through to see what was truly needed to be restored, uh, restored for uh, to make it structurally sound versus, uh, you know, maybe there, there was just some things that were part of the bridge originally that we didn't want to take off. Uh, one of the things you'll see in the left picture there. Um, there's an eye bolt that originally housed some pipe railing on the structure and the historical society did not want to remove any of those and wanted to leave those on and, and you'll see, you'll see those in the final uh, plans as we get there. Uh, these are just a picture of some of the upper and lower um, tie rods that tied the two sides of the uh, bowstring together. Um, and you can see some of the pieces here, uh, there's different pins, uh, parts, pieces. Uh, we, we, did, we did go through every single part and decided how many of each one we wanted to make or repurpose or, or, or what. Uh, the interesting thing was a lot of these parts that we saw in this structure uh, potentially were originally cast. So um, we did have to do some thinking on how we were gonna restore them. We didn't have enough time and the project didn't have enough funding in it to go out and, and make you know castings of everything. So uh, we did a lot of uh, structural welding and things like that to make the parts look as they did originally um, so you couldn't tell them apart. And then in the bottom left there, uh, you'll see the original uh, cast sign from the wrought iron bridge company. There was two of these on, on this structure. Um, neither of them actually made it uh, through. They were both tracked and it showed a lot Tony, of you need to... Tony, you need to speak into the microphone a little clearer, please. Okay, sorry, Michael. 
so here's a couple other pictures. This is the main uh, truss member itself, top top cord. As you can see, um, there's a lot of deterioration. We saw a lot of this in the field when we had originally gone out to see the project. And then after the sandblasting process, there was a lot more uh, that had shown up just because it was behind the paint or it was originally, uh, you know, extremely thin, thin wall at that time. And then the sandblasting just kind of blew through it. So after we did our initial inspection, um, our next steps in the process were detailed drawings. Uh, since there was so much top cord restoration that had to be done, we had to do some research development to figure out how we're going to make this, uh, this shape. It was originally a hot rolled shape that must have been rolled, obviously, specifically for the wrought iron bridge company. Um, and then we had to submit for drawing approvals. And then obviously we got into some of the fabrication. So this was this was probably the the hardest part of this job was you'll see on the left is a typical cross section of the top cord. Um, and then on the right, you'll see the pictures of, of what we have left here. Uh, there's a lot of deterioration. The water had been running down on the insides of all these boxes for many years uh, without it being maintained, had rotted through. So we had a significant amount of structural restoration to do um, on these uh, cord members. This is a cross section of the actual box itself after we had taken it apart. Uh, it's a bent shape and uh, we had originally thought maybe it was some welded angle or something. We were trying to figure out what it could be until we started to cut it apart and did do some etching and, and we did find out that it was really a hot rolled um, shape. So Essentially, what we did is we just kept going through iterations with the with the blacksmith and with McCormick Taylor on engineer until we were able to. We kept sending down samples to seeing what was going to fit um, to match the existing shape uh, from an from an aesthetics perspective, as well as from the structural requirements that we had to have. Uh, so this took some trial and error. It was quite a bit. We're we're about uh, three hours away from the actual blacksmith shop. So we had, you know, made a lot of these in different different uh, orientations, sent them down to them to try out. Uh, there's also a splice uh, splice where the two sections come together that essentially sits on the top side of the shape on the right that you see there to mate two sections together. So we had to, as we're modifying or making these box sections, we're having to modify uh, the splice that goes between them as well to try to to get everything to mate up appropriately. Because in a lot of cases, we were trying to mate uh, a new structural member to one of the old existing um, sections that maybe were on the other side. Because these, these uh, box sections were about 18 feet long, if I remember correctly. And uh, there was eight of them across the whole structure. So this is kind of what we came up with finally. Uh, the picture on the right, obviously, is the original hot rolled shape, and the picture on the left is what we had come up with. We had formed it in press break. Um, it seemed to work out very well. The shapes made it up uh, pretty good, and like I said, the the uh, blacksmith was able to uh, get all the joints to match up. Some of the other things that we had done, the hanger component you see on the right side of the screen uh, was originally probably a, a cast piece. And then a threaded rod, um, it was eventually threaded. The piece on the left is one that we had made here in our shop. Uh, we essentially took a block of block of steel, milled it out, uh, threaded it, and, and then we had to weld some stuff together to make it kind of look the way it did in the way it did originally. Uh, one of the interesting parts was about the site assembly and installation. Um, after everything was shop painted, uh, everything was shipped to site for uh, reassembly. There's about 6,000 rivets on the structure total. Um, during the restoration process, about 2,500 were replaced. 150 of those were done in the field. And most of those field installed rivets were putting the box sections together. Uh, and we were able to save about 75% of the original structure and components. So here's uh, just a kind of a lay down yard in the in the field of all the parts that we had. 
uh, after they were painted, uh, restored at the blacksmith shop, and then sent out to, to job site. You can see in the back of that picture, back the top back of that picture, those are the top cord members that are uh, that were all restored. And essentially, uh, the structure itself was built completely adjacent to its final resting place. Uh, it took about two weeks for the blacksmith to put everything back together on site. And here's just some pictures of him. Uh, the right picture on the very bottom, that little uh, yellow part, that's actually his uh, his his little oven for uh, the rivet oven. So they had to heat him, and obviously install him on site. It's just a couple more pictures. Uh, it, it was interesting to watch these guys put this together. Like I said, there's a lot of parts. Uh, those little tags I talked about in the beginning of the presentation remained intact all the way through this phase here so that we knew where everything had to go, which definitely helped, helped things out. Uh, so in September of 2022, as you can see, the structure uh, here is rigged up to the crane and it's getting ready to be set in its final location on Lyonsville, PA. And uh, after a number of hours of getting everything situated, it finally did get installed in place. Everything fit fairly well. There was some uh, bearing alignment issues, but it was just, I think, because of the uh, length of the span. But, but we ended up getting everything to fit in place in six So here's here's some shots of the uh, the final project. And uh, like I said, this thing was, the whole bridge structure was repainted. So really you can't tell the new components from the old components. And you'll see in this picture here the uh, the we're not using the full full width of this structure. It's the uh, about eleven foot span for the for the bike trail. And then new 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 castings were made for the uh, wrought iron bridge company, as you can see on the top of this sign. There's the their sign was painted and put back uh, to preserve some of the history of the actual truss. Uh, some lessons learned that we had, the, the having an open team dialogue any, everywhere from PennDOT down to our blacksmith and uh, us as a fabrication shop helped out immensely. Um, we had a very hands-on team with McCormick Taylor's design engineer uh, coming down, reviewing our parts, uh, having different meetings at the blacksmith shop. I think without that coordination, uh, we wouldn't have got through the project as, it went, it went as smooth as we did. Uh, there was a huge communication coordination effort between us as the fabricator and the blacksmith, what parts he needed when. Um, without that good team teamwork there, I don't I don't think it, the project would have been as successful. Um, the one thing I will say on the job, as far as the budget goes, um, expect financial and schedule um, to be variable. Uh, we ended up replacing, I think about, 40 to 50 percent more than the original contact contract plans had called for as far as replacement steel than that were identified prior to sandblasting so that unforeseen repairs pay item uh, that was in the job really came in handy um, to keep everything moving forward and also uh, there was some schedule variation because of that we had obviously more stuff to fabricate kept finding things as we went through the project. 